Okay guys, so now that we've got Abaddon all finished up with the uh, the base on that, it's time to move on to Locum. So, first of all, I'm going to do um, all of the green armour. Um, so the colours that I've got down here are Inky by Darkness, some Abaddon Black, some Cabalite Green, Sybarite Green, and some White Scar. Now the idea is that the Incubi Darkness is going to be for the darker areas and then we will build up using the Sybrite and Cabalite Greens with whites for the, uh, the shiny areas. The black is just in case I need it just to darken up some shadows um, but chances are for the majority of this um, I'll just be using the, the three greens. So. Um, I did start um, without hitting the record button. All I've done so far is the, uh, the Ink by Darkness. I'm just getting a couple of thinned out coats on here uh, using a size 3 brush with a stray hair. And uh, all I'm going to do at this stage is just try and get a nice even layer. Now because the light is coming from this angle my highlight area is going to be pretty much what we can see here, this light area here. So that's going to be almost white. Um, down here, obviously, it's going to be a little bit more reflective light. So it's not going to be as bright, um, but there will be a little bit of the, the brighter highlight up here. And obviously, the legs we treat as cylinders. So we've got the highlight here, the highlight coming up here, and then here. The arms, obviously, we've got one here, again, where you can see the, uh, the light there. And the same with this. Obviously, on the rim of his, um, what we'll call it, a neck brace area, obviously we're going to get the highlight and then slightly darker green towards the bottom of it. So, uh, on the outsides of the legs, obviously this is where things are going to get a little bit darker. So what I want to do is fade this up toward that darker green. Now obviously the arm is going to be pretty much all green um, but I do want to try and get this um, you know somewhat dark dark um, especially on sort of the insides of the legs and things like that. Now obviously anything because the light is coming from the front anything at the back is going to be relatively dark um, we could do this one or two ways, or well, I could do this one or two ways. I could try and get the light on the back um, similar so that if you were looking at the model from the front, the light is coming from this direction. And if you're looking at it from the back, the light is coming from this direction. But then that's going to look a bit weird when it's on display. So I'm going to concentrate with the light coming from the front, which means anything back here is going to be relatively dark. Uh, which is where this Incubi Darkness is going to come in and then like I said we can blend this up with uh, the Cabalite Green um, if I say Sybarite Green when I'm talking about the darker colour then obviously it's the darker colour that I mean and I just get the Sybarite and the Cabalite mixed up um, but yeah those are the, those are the two greens, Sybarite and Cabalite so light green and dark green. So all I'm doing at this stage is just making sure that I get that nice, clean, evenly painted base colour down that I can then build up my layers with the uh, the greens. Now I want this brighter out here and then we're going to get darker as we come this way. I'm not too worried about leaving um, you know a black trim around the edges for now. Um, I'll go back in and put them in later at this 
stage in the model or in the painting I'm just looking to get the, the base colours down And uh, at this stage in the videos, as you're watching these guys as I'm uploading them, the uh, the voting for April's model is almost over. Um, especially as this particular video is going out, um, I think by the end of finishing loking up, and you're getting those videos, the the, the voting would have been up. So go and make sure you cast your vote as to who you want me to paint up for April. Obviously I'll be buying that model at the end of February. So at the time of filming this, um, in about three weeks is when I'll be buying it. And obviously I've got my preferred choice there. Um, as my patrons do and I don't have anybody following me yet or supporting just yet. I may end up being able to choose what I want myself, that's not a problem, and if at the time of this going out I do have a few lovely subscribers then I would like to say thank you for your support, and uh, I hope you're enjoying the content that I'm trying to get out as much as possible. But uh, yeah, so next month. Uh, March, we've got Lionel Johnson. The reason I didn't do a vote for next month's one is so that I can get a little bit ahead of myself when it comes to painting them so that I'm essentially painting these guys um, about three weeks in advance. So by the time you guys have voted, obviously end of February, I'd be having to paint it up throughout March and try and get the videos out as quick as possible whereas this way I can paint April's throughout March and have the video up for you guys on time hopefully this is still picking up now um, obviously let me know guys what you think of the uh, the video so far um, you know I am new to all this and uh, you can let me know what you think I need improving on what I could you know maybe go into depth more camera positioning camera quality and things like that um, whether or not you want me to do focus points on these character focus instead of you know our 10 one hour long videos or two hour long videos um, you know you may want me to just show like you know a section of a leg uh, and then a section of black a section of gold and stuff like that I'm not too sure what you guys want so at the minute I'm giving you full unedited unscripted content uh, video so you can see exactly how I paint as though I was streaming live or something now I will say as much as I like this model there were a few little bits that I wasn't too happy with that I needed a little bit of uh, filling and stuff that does happen obviously with resin models um, and that was just in his arm here when it was glued I could either angle the arm back slightly in which case he would get a gap here or I could glue it uh, slightly on the forward but then he got a gap here I could have filed it down maybe and got it a little bit level but then that would have made the armor look a bit weird so all I've done is just tuck some uh, green stuff in here scored it down with a, um, a blade just to get those ridges in there and uh, that's come up nice so not too bad a problem but obviously something that I thought I'd point out just in case you guys are looking to 
buy these models if you haven't already. Um, resin models, they're not always perfect casts. Um, you can see here if the camera will pick it up. You can see just there I've got this line. Um, it's a bit of a slip cast. Um, I had had sanded that down um, to the best that I could but it would have taken away too much with the leg if I had uh, done any more. So you can get sort of slip cast and things like that. Luckily this wasn't too bad. Um, it's on the inside of the leg. It's not going to stand out too much. But otherwise I would have really sanded that down and uh, tried sculpting it back a little bit, you know, just putting some putty on, gluing some putty on and then smoothing that out to sort of refill the leg or reshape it, make it rounder. Right, now I've just realised something, I've done this knee pad this colour and it's actually a copperish bronze looking colour. Um, not to worry, it's actually this knee pad that I wanted to paint in uh, in the greens. I do have the Forge World picture as a reference for this. I did originally want to do Loken in his Lunar Wolves colour. Um, the main reason being is I can't remember in the story whether or not he went back to the Sons of Horus which is this colour, or the Lunar Wolves. But every reference that I've seen of him is in the, uh, the Sons of Horus colours. So I've ended up going with, with that rather than the, the white grey of uh, the Lunar Wolves. Which may have looked good in contrast against Abaddon. You know, you've got black versus white, light versus dark. But I do like the uh, the torque EC type look of this. So now just trying to get his armour pieces. Got the front leg there. Apologies for knocking the camera uh, just so you guys know I am filming this camera here what you are looking at the model is with a, um, a Sony Cybershot camera so it's quite big and bulky I've got it right in front of me and I'm having to paint around it arms coming from either side so you're in the middle you get a good view the problem is it only runs on 20 odd minutes of film time before it auto turns off or auto stops recording I don't know why and I can't change it unless any of you guys know but the camera that you guys are seeing here is a cheap Logitech knockoff um, it cost me 25 or 35 pounds I think um, it's not bad it is 1080p or 720 that I've got it set on here the problem is is when it comes to the colors and um, it doesn't show the colors true I mean they're not too bad at the minute I'm now using a different um, recording software for the palette cam um, before I was using Streamlabs OBS now I'm using OBS I find that it's allowing the camera to work a little bit better but ideally I do want to get the Logitech C920 to replace uh, the Cybershot. So this camera that you guys are looking at here, I want to be the Cybershot and then the uh, the Logitech or the Logitubo, the ripoff one, can remain as is. Unfortunately, at 100 pounds or just under 100 pounds, that's a little bit pricey for me to afford when I'm having to buy miniatures each month. But that is what your patron funds, you know, the money that I'm making from patron will be going towards is a new camera. Like I say, any funds from you guys um, will go back into the models, whether it's buying new models, brushes, paints, 
um, recording equipment, software, anything like that. Uh, models that I wouldn't usually buy so that I can do tutorials on specific models and painting techniques. You know, that all comes from your support. So, once again, thank you for that. So, as soon as I can get a better camera, the quality will improve. So, uh, do stick with me, guys. I am trying. Right, looking at the reference, I'm painting that green, and that's not green. That is, again, the pop. Uh, the copper colour the same as his knee so it's just the hand here and inside this arm now as a kit this piece the shoulder pad doesn't actually um, isn't actually attached here I could have left it off and painted this separate to get to certain areas easier but I figured if this shoulder pad is attached, I'm going to have to paint the same on either one. So I may as well attach this shoulder pad and paint it up. Doesn't make a difference. Right, now that's green there. Obviously, Abaddon isn't fully finished yet, although I've, you know, classing him is as towards finished. Um, you know, he's just got a few details and dirt and stuff that is going to be added once Loken is fully done and based. Then I can go back in with all those details and uh, really sort them both out and get them to that finished quality, which obviously be the last video you guys watch. Now what I did with this guy, obviously I'm painting him sub-assemblies, his cloak is going to be done separate to the rest of him. Um, lost my train of thought. Completely lost my train of thought. Okay, let's see if I can start it again. Okay, so... Sorry guys, I've gone blank. Wow. Great way to uh, make a video, isn't it? Like I said, I want these videos unedited. Um, almost like a live stream paint for you guys. And then you can see every step. I'm not going to say I take. Every step of the process. There you go. This little bit under here, all the while bearing in mind the uh, reference images. Right, so yeah, what I think I'll do no black in this. Oh, apologies for the uh, the lorry there. Oh, apologies there guys, just had to check that that wasn't a, uh, a delivery I'm expecting. It's just a food delivery truck reversing up the road. Right. So yeah, I'm not going to use black too much in this for the shadows. I think it will be too dark. Um, for the green, it wouldn't look right. So instead I will be using the Incubi Darkness as my darkest point um, and then working right up to that sybarite, sybarite green for my lightest I may even mix in a small amount of the cabalite green into this or at least glaze it right round just to tint this a little bit more towards that green. Um, I typically use Inky by Darkness as the shadow area for uh, the 
Cabalite and Sybarite greens when I'm moving up with those, when I'm using those for highlights and such. Um, I also like to use it for um, adding up to other mixtures for shadows. Um, I think it's a nice cool colour, uh, makes a nice cool shadow. You could use maybe a you know something a little bit more towards purple, but uh, yeah, I think that this it's got that very cool grey green look. Um, which I think makes good highlights for blacks as well as good shading for shadow. Right, so looking at this, it looks like I've got the majority of the uh, This done. You've got nice even coverage all over so that we can start moving up with the uh, the Sybarite, uh, no, Cabalite. Right, so let's see if we can mix some of this up. So we'll get, take a little bit of the inky by darkness here and uh, some of the cabalite. this in the shadow areas so let's have a look right now as the light is coming from this angle all of this is going to be brighter than the backs but this is quite exposed so it's still going to have some light so the only real dark area that I'm going to have in here is going to be under the crotch area and just inside the leg here so I want to start bear in mind this is thin so it's gonna build up here this is then going to be a little bit under shadow so we can pull it just a little bit this way foot is going to be quite light so obviously we can go here with this and what I'm essentially doing although I'm kind of doing a glaze I'm still doing it in layers so that I'm building it up from that dark right now obviously it's going to start getting a little bit darker around here again so we can do the same on all these little bits of armour. Uh, that knee pad is the bronzy look so hopefully you can see that it is very subtle at the minute. I'm 
just glazing these back to get them that nice soft blend going from the darker inky by darkness and then fading round to the uh, the greens right so on this side again it's open the underside of the leg here is quite dark um, there's going to be a little bit of reflective light but not too much so I'm going to leave it the Incubite Darkness colour and what I'm going to do is bring this up this is going to be a little bit brighter although it's behind him it's still quite exposed to uh, what would be brighter daylight and then as we come back down this way now you notice I'm doing an up down motion and the paint is getting less and less as it's applied and then I can finish it off there and just so I don't get that harsh line I'm just going to pull the paint from that edge back this way and that will give that softer fade under here Now obviously it's important that I let each pass dry. Um, it's quite humid here. I mean it's cold but it it's warm enough that it will dry relatively quick. Um, so I don't need a hair dry or anything like that. And because I'm moving it, it's sort of in sections of the armour by the time I've done the top one, the first one is dry enough to go back with another pass. So this one, the legs a little bit more vertical. So with the light coming at this angle, it is going to be a little bit brighter in there than it will down here so we can go all the way round with the knee now the knee pad obviously because the lights coming from above we're gonna get down a little bit of light down behind it and we're gonna brighten up this side of the I don't know we'll call it a crotch shield this is gonna be brighter than this side but again because this is a vertical it's gonna catch some of that open light um, you know unless you're using a hard bright light source you're gonna get light from around you know light travels in straight lines but if you've got a large light source like a Sun you've got this whole area coming down so you are going to get light around um, you'll get a little bit more light near reflective surfaces um, you know bounce light and things like that but you are going to get area light around certain points too right, so come back from here and again blend this up and I think color wise in the shadow area or area where there's going to be less light but you still get that um, area light this isn't far off from how bright how bright I'm going to want it in this area but as with Abaddon I like to get it to a certain point and then stop so that once I do other areas if I do a nice bright area on the front for example I may say say that this is a bit too dark and I can lighten it up whereas if I do this too light and then do some highlights up here but they're quite um, not so much bright as bright as I thought they'd be this may end up too bright in contrast to each other so I always try to work to a certain point and then stop so that I can come back later and uh, brighten that up 
I mean, you could always glaze over it with obviously your shadow colour, so in this case the Incubi Darkness, um, and dull it down if it is a bit too bright. But if you can avoid doing that, then at least the way that I see it, the better. Right now, obviously, top here, I mean, it's behind his backpack and it is under his cloak. So, essentially, we could leave it Incubi Darkness. Uh, let's just have a look. So, I've got his cloak here. So, for the most part, that is so we are going to leave that dark. So, that's going to be Incubi Black, uh, Incubi Darkness with a quick light glaze of this green coming towards the edge there and the same on this side just a slight light glaze just to tint it more towards the cabalite green yep that was the right one towards the uh, the cabalite green So same with the elbow, with the light coming in this direction, we're going to be a little bit dark. This is going to be bright, and then under here is going to be dark, so I think we'll go from about here, and we'll use that as our glazing point. So with each successive glaze, see if we can get that in focus, with each successive glaze I'm going to move back just a small amount each time until we've got our bright point up the top. Right, so for the front of the armor, this is going to be pretty much in light. So we'll get the uh, the first coats of this on. Obviously, we've got his wrist here is going to be pretty bright. Not only is the light hitting it, but it's relatively open under here. So that will be the dar darker tone will be this at it's almost opaque and then the same on this side is going to be a little bit dark but it is open so that's going to hit a right. little bit dark under this side getting darker underneath and then in here we're going to be a little bit brighter but not too much because it is still in shadow so we can come back and do this side again along with this side obviously I'm forgetting the knee pad there because that is the copper bronze look and I uh, painted that with the incubi when it wasn't meant to so now, just feather in this. Now I know a lot of artists or painters say that where the brush ends can leave the, pack, the most paint deposited, but I find if I use this up down stroke, it doesn't really matter whether you end or start in the area you want it faded um, because of the way the paint is leaving. I mean if you do it that way then you can see I've got the paint deposit in here um, so coming along and it leaves it there but if we go up and down it doesn't do that especially as you come to the edge 
you start to use the point of the brush and you're almost feathering it um, to non-existence um, and I find that that gives a nice blend then into that darker area elbow was this one? Nope this is green so the elbow is fine it's the wrist cuff that is darker uh, copper so here because I am doing it in this sideways motion I am getting this deposit of paint up here but like I said if I was going this way then I won't so when I'm doing that, it means that you know I can go right from the highlight point to the shadow instead of having to worry about going from the shadow to the highlight point. So it really just does depend on how you use the brush, the technique that you use, rather than where you're actually leaving paint. As long as you keep in mind where your paint is being deposited you should be fine with working towards your light or your dark and then it just becomes a matter of preference Okay, so all along here is where I'm going to get the highlight because of the light coming down. So I'm going to get this bright light that comes up there a little bit. And you can see that I'm now getting really smooth blends with this layer in. Hopefully this camera can focus and show that. So this chest area under here is obviously a little bit under shadow from the uh, the sword, but it is in an open enough area that it's going to be brighter. We're going to have shadow on this side, but again, it's open enough that it's going to be relatively bright. Uh, obviously, behind his head is going to be a little bit dark, so we're just going to tint that with a bit of green.
Now I can see we've got this wet spot here. You can see the light shining on it just there. So I don't want to go back over that just yet. glazes the the reason I like using them so much is that if you end up with a dark uh, too bright an area near a shadow you can use for example the inky by darkness on this one to glaze over that transition line and uh, just bring it back to darkness a little bit So this I'm going to leave because it's under shadow and thinking about it I should probably leave that leg as well. That's quite a bit under shadow there. So this is bright enough here. Just get a little bit more on there. That's as dark or as bright as I want it. So now we can start working and bringing this up to the highlight. And then this area here, like so. This bottom foot is going to catch quite a bit. And then, like I said, down the side of the leg here, we're going to have a little bit there. Top of the elbow top of the uh, the glove or gauntlet hand whatever part you want to call it right, and then like I said the underside here is open but it's in shadow or it's underneath so it will get a bit of light but not too much so we just want to get that in there a little bit and then we have these fingers here obviously at the minute I'm using a size 3 brush um, normally I would do detail work with a smaller brush but this is just to get these colours in Plus I find glazing with a larger brush um, is easier, it leaves less marks. small amount of armour just in here but because of the armor, two armour pieces being close together that is going to cause quite a bit of shadow in there so we don't have to go too bright same with under here basically anywhere that's really under armour areas doesn't need to be as bright Now 
so that's about it for the uh, this stage we can now start to mix in some of the other uh, or a little bit more of the cabalite green or we may be able to glaze straight with the cabalite green we shall have a look So first of all, you can see I've got a little bit of a hard transition just here. So all I'm going to do is take a little bit of the inky by darkness, thin that down again to a glaze. And then I'm just going to Go over the two a few times, pick it up a little bit more. There we go, and blend that out just so it becomes a little bit darker. rest of that seems to have transitioned nicely rinse off in the pot there and then just pull that back and there we go a little bit wet so it's showing the edges a little bit but when that dries that will settle in nicely and let's uh, put that shadow back okay so uh, first off guys I'm back now uh, there's a couple of hours later since recording the, the previous segment where we did the uh, the incubi and cabalite mix so with the water uh, the wet palette obviously you can see that it's uh, got a bit of condensation in there from the lid being on um, so the paints are spread out a little bit that's the only reason they're spread out it's just they basically got a bit over watered so I've just put a little bit more paint in each one just to uh, sort that out so what I'm now going to do is try and mix up pretty much the same mix that I had before somewhere not a bit too dark so here we've got pretty much what it was before I'm now going to mix in about half this again of the uh, the cabalite green this is going to take us not far from the uh, the cabalite now just slightly darker thin it down and start to get that glaze going and again because this is a glaze what I can do is work up until the brightest point is this dark and then I can go and start mixing in the sybarite so, once again, keeping in mind where my uh, highlight point is, which is right around here, I can now start to fade this outwards into the shadow area. Just wicking off the excess moisture off the brush so I can bring that glaze down like so and this is where I can start to form 
some of my shadow shapes uh, by which I mean the shadows that are caused by the other elements around the model as well as keeping slightly away from trim areas and such so next off like we said we've got this dark area here just under the leg and then that's going to fade off so we can start roughly here and bring this round and that's going to get brighter towards the back slightly and then that's going to fade off and get darker as it goes back inside now on the inside here because the light is coming at this downward angle this is going to be pretty much the brightest spot and then that will fade off into that dark under area underneath and again this is going to take multiple layers as well as going back into that slightly darker colour to uh, get the transitions right on this so now what I want is this obviously going to be the brighter side but this is still a little bit too dark on this side so what I'm going to do is start shaping some of that shadow area with this highlight so pretty much staying just shy of this centre ridge line just shy of the uh, what will be the gold trim and then again here is our bright spot and then we're going to get slightly darker as we come in like so and then around here because it is exposed light it's going to be relatively bright and then get darker as we come towards the inside again obviously this is under cape um, so technically no I wouldn't have that would we if we're like that then uh, in position and no it's not too much light under there so there you go guys it is important to make sure that you bear in mind where extra parts that you haven't attached yet are so that you know where you've got your highlights So my mix here is thickening up a little bit, it's going a little bit too harsh onto the model. So I'm just thinning it down, wick away some of the excess moisture from the brush. And there we go, back to a nice glaze.
Right, so as I'm doing this, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking the shadow area under the leg here might be a little bit too dark for this green. So all I'm going to do is give this a couple of light passes with this shade just to brighten it up ever so slightly and get it a little bit more oh we split the brush there and that happened because I'd put pressure on the back end here and it's going to uh, pull the bristles not a problem get water twist it through me uh, paper towel Good to go. All right, now for the back, which is under the cape. That inky by darkness is fine as a dark shadow, but I think for any area that is essentially exposed to um, reflective light or um, sort of aura light, you know, just being bright in general, I think I'll use this to make it just a little bit brighter, and then we can work up from this for those bright spots. And this is the beauty of glazes, is that you can go straight over an area and just brighten it up to the level that you need. Right, so the legs are getting there. Not sure if the camera can pick it up. See if we can put the brightness up a little bit. Right, so work on the top of the body now. So like I said on the neck, uh, this is going to be the brighter spot here and then darker on this side. But I do want it a little bit brighter. And then I've got this under the arm over here. here. The other, the other thing, thing that I like about, about glazes is, is because, because the, the paint's, paint's so thin, thin that even, even if you go over small, small detail areas, areas you know you, you can, can get, get a good bunch of layers, layers on there without, without worrying about obscuring, obscuring detail, detail with, with too much, much paint, paint or anything. So, so his arm is above the, cla uh, the, the cloak, cloak cape, cape, whatever you want to call it. Right. Now, I'm, I'm not entirely, entirely sure if this is something that I've done, done but the cloak, cloak you can see there doesn't join up to the strap on this side, I may have trimmed it down too much. And because the backpack goes over there, that's not too much of a problem, but if it is exposed, I'll have to obviously throw some party in there and uh, paint that up. But for now, we're just going to concentrate on uh, getting these green tones up.
Right, right, so, so the green that I've got, got on the back, back here is what I want to be my brightest, brightest um, open, open light colour. So, so I suppose you could call it the base colour. So essentially you've got base colour, highlight will be on this side, and then shadow, or deep shadow, is the Inky Boy um, mix. And then open shadow is obviously, like I say, the, sort of the base mix, um, but slightly darker, which is what we've got going on just under here. Which obviously will also be under this elbow and arm on this side. Okay, apologies there guys, it seems the uh, hard drive run out of recording space. Again, something that I need to upgrade is to a, uh, a specific or a recording hard drive, specifically for recording uh, these videos, and that will be along with the webcam. Um, so, just to uh, recap, just in case I've missed the, uh, the audio and that with it, basically using this mix um, this is the level that we've got to so starting to get that nice green on the uh, the tops of the legs and then some of the brighter areas slightly obviously darker down here um, we've got it on the arms the basically anywhere on the front of the armor the back of the armor is keeping with that 50 50 calibite and uh, incubi mix um, just to say darker because it's under cloak it is going to be very dark under there um, and I just think that this colour would end up like this in shadow so what I can do now is I'm going to switch brush from the size 3 down to the size 1 and I'm going to use this for edge highlighting um, there aren't too many edges a lot of the edges in this are 
trimmed with um, the gold but I'm going to use the pure um, cabalite as the edge highlight for this um, maybe mix in a little bit of the sybarite just to brighten it up slightly all this mix there we go so just slightly brighter and this is going to work nicely um, as an edge highlight so all I'm going to do with this is go around everything and pick off a nice defined highlight it doesn't matter too much about the size I can neaten that up a little bit later on but obviously if I can keep it as relatively thin and clean as possible that will reduce the amount that I have to do so straight down the middle here support my hands on the uh, the tool my elbows are firmly on the arms of my chair which you can constantly hear squeaking and then I will run this down now this is probably going to get lost on here when the uh, the next level of highlighting goes we are going to pretty much bring it up to this but this is more so that I know what it is that I'm working with or towards and obviously this is going to be work more in areas such as here where it's in shadow but we still want to define these edges uh, so yeah it's pretty much the shadow areas is what this is for top of the neck here on both the inside and outside edges down the center of here and then just on the bottom of the uh, the chest plates here and then what we can also do is use this to mark in some battle damage highlights within those shadow areas so what we'll do switch this brush down just because I don't like the point that is on this one um, I need to change the brush really to a, a newer brush it's good for doing general models but the uh, the point has gone a little bit flat on the end due to some glue damage that I had to pull off so I'll switch up to a, a zero with a nice point on it and we can get some nice fine lines from this for uh, a little bit of damage and like I say this highlight damage works well in uh, shadow areas where even the damage is going to be in shadow but those sharp edges of that damage are still going to show a little bit of highlight I've got the whole brush wet and this is so that I've got some moisture on the back end of the bristles which will keep the uh, the paint on the tip moist which makes it a lot easier for applying fine marks without the paint drying up now I have to say there's not as much damage sculpted onto Loken as what there was on Abaddon I 
that we can uh, you know easily put in the odd scratch here and there A little one here. Alright, we got an edge here. There's not too many edges along here. We're just going to put a little bit of damage in here. It doesn't matter too much, it's not going to get shown. But it's nice to know it's there just in case. Now this armour actually has an edge line that I can see right along here. So let's see if we can get that to line in nicely. same one here a little bit of damage on the elbow here Right, so I'm happy with that. So next up we can move on back to the three. Get this Sybarite green and some of this Cabalite green. Yeah, that's about 50-50 mix. And then brighten it up a little bit more. Alright, so this is going to be the final highlight, but we want it quite contrasting. So what I'm going to do for this is try and bring out most of the moisture off the brush. And then start stippling in where I want this highlight to be. And this will give that slightly textured effect in this uh, brighter area. Again, I can do that down where this reflective light is going to be. So we've got a bit of reflective highlight along here. And then we've 
for some of that highlight up here from that downcoming light source. And the same on this side of this panel. And then just a little bit on this side of the neck panel. Top of the arm here. And then bring that onto the thumbs. Top of the hand. And then a little bit just around here. Like so. So got that highlight coming in, so we can get this to focus. No, you don't want to focus. There we go. There it is, so we can see a lot more of that texture detail in there with that brighter highlight. Now all I've got to do is just blend it out on the top there. So all I'm going to do is mix in a little of this mix with the, uh, the previous mix. Thin it down quite a bit. Very subtly. And then just uh, get a nice point on the tip. And then again, just stipple it slightly. And then brighten it up along the top. Still not convinced that this side is quite bright enough. As with some of this on the shadow area. Now obviously I've got this side. Now I don't want it as textured as this side because it's reflective light. But we do want some highlight. So apply it on and then just feather the edge with a damp brush pulling towards that highlight right in there and that will give us that reflective edge highlight on this side and then obviously the rest of it is under the cape so you don't need to worry too much Alright, now I can take a little bit of that white mix that into this mix thin it down slightly thicker than the glaze wick away the excess and then go back in and again, just very carefully stipple a small highlight just down the inside of the leg. I'm going to have to do this a few times because of this being the uh, 
almost the glaze consistency but a little bit thicker it's still going to uh, fade down now I don't want it on this side because this side should be the same as this side this side is where the light is catching the most and so it's where the most highlight is going to be and then the same with here we're going to have this highlight right down along this edge like so and on the hand a little bit on the elbow not too much this hand is going to catch quite a bit of it in here and then on the uh, the thumb so again went as a brush get it nice and wet and then blend that down a little bit along here we need to we can bring some of the glaze back in and just brighten that up slightly Right, a little bit more white. And then back in, but this time keeping this very concentrated right down the middle There we go. So we can go back on the top here. Like so. And if we can get focus, we now have that nice highlight coming down that shiny armour. Getting darker underneath. And then obviously around the back gets darker. And we do the same up here. And then on the, uh, the thumb. And then just a little bit on the edge of this hand. Up on the armour here. And of course a little bit on these fingers. Which I have been neglecting. And so I'll have to work up again for a little bit. Blend these get these fingers up to the same tone that we can then get that white on there to stand out it's almost a very nice mint green this final highlight right now what I can do is make up a little bit more of this so that I've got enough to uh, work from and this is going to be my final highlight so obviously we've got to take some of that base green mix it in there mix a little bit more white and we're looking to get this nice minty green again 
add the water to thin it slightly. Rinse the brush. And then all we want to do is just pick up on the tip by rolling and pulling through the paint. This way we still get a nice good tip on the end of our brush that we can then use for edge highlighting any of these really exposed areas I'm just going to stipple this down on this uh, center piece just to give that texture highlight and then the same along the top of the foot Edge of the hand pretty much has it. Do the elbow like so, and do the inside, but just on the outside edges of this area. Oh, didn't want that there. And then we can go just on the outside of this hand. Right, and then in some of these uh, slightly lighter areas, we can go in and just add some slightly brighter scratches and chinks. And we don't need to get them too much in the highlight area because the brightness of the, the highlights or that, that shine down the armour would uh, obscure any sort of edge highlights from scratches and such. And there we have it guys, that is Loken finished, or at least the uh, the green armour, that's Loken's green armour finished. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this part of the, the series, or the, uh, the character focus episodes. So uh, next time we'll be going around and doing the black, obviously he's got the shoulder pauldrons, the um, backs of his his um, undersuit obviously he's got the texture and stuff in there we don't need to worry too much about here because it is in shadow from that cape um, but yeah we'll just go around 
and start building up those blacks very similar to how I did with Abaddon obviously working on uh, the shapes of them so obviously whilst I'm doing these I've got photos of this work on uh, my Patreon so you can check that out and my Instagram and that so you can go and have a look at those uh, but yeah that's him finished for this part so uh, check back in a day or two and uh, we'll have the video for the black won't be a long one that one there's not a huge amount to it so you're probably looking at half hour 45 minutes maybe um, I may make it an hour and do the the black depending obviously the time that we have we end up doing the black and uh, maybe these leather straps uh, which I believe are in brown and then uh, we'll have a look at basically anything that is not metal um, in the sense of silver gold or bronze copper whatever these other colors are we'll uh, try and get done in the next video and then we can work on doing the the golds and that after then so like I said probably a little bit dark on the back for uh, what this armor would be but it is heavily in shadow so you know personally I like the uh, the darker look and then we've got this brighter front which actually shows the true color of the armor when it's exposed to light so uh, thanks a lot for joining me for this video guys until next time take it easy keep painting those minis okay so now that we've got all of the, uh, the highlights and such done what I'm going to do is take a, um, a plastic palette here one of the uh, the well palettes and into this I'm going to mix in or make an Incubi Darkness wash so all I'm going to do is a drop of the Incubi Darkness I'll mix a little bit of black into that as well and then if I could just find my Lamian medium which I believe should be around here somewhere there we go so to this I'm gonna throw in let's have a look one two three four five I will say six, six drops of the Lamian medium and then just a small amount of the black there. Mix this up. It's still sitting a bit too heavy so just going to mix in a bit of water with it. more there we go that's pretty much what I'm looking for all right so I'm now going to take the uh, size 3 uh, sorry not the size 3 the size 1 brush and I'm going to use this to essentially panel line all of this darkness. I think that might be a bit too green. Still a little bit too much on the green side, so we'll mix in a little bit more black. I want it almost a dark, very dark color. I could do this with uh, non oil or something but I don't want it quite as dark as that so let's have a look see what we've got here and I think I may end up going with the non oil Yeah, 
non oil. So scrap this bit of footage. Okay, so now that we've got all of that done, I'm going to take some non oil and put some of this in this uh, well palette that I've got here without breaking the uh, model sending flying. That should be enough for now. And then I want just a small amount of black just to thicken it up slightly. There we go. Now I'm going to use this to essentially panel line all of the uh, the edges up against where these gold bits are. So along all the trim and recesses and such. Now I'm using a size one brush here, the uh, the one that's not too great, um, but we're only looking to sort of place this in and let it sit. Now it's not going to happen too much around the highlight area because that bright is going to run over everything and it isn't, isn't going to cause any shadow but we do want it along these other panels and trims just to make them stand out a little bit gives them a little bit of separation, a little bit of a dark edge I did try this with uh, Inky by Darkness, trying to get a more subtle panel line, um, but it was a little bit too subtle, it didn't quite give the effect that I was looking for. So I decided, so I decided. <laughs> so I decided that the uh, the non oil would be best for this. So we're just going to get this into the, uh, the fingers. Obviously, trying to miss that edge there, and because this is a a shade, it is going to work very similar to a glaze but it will sit down in that recess and because I thickened it up with that small amount of uh, Abaddon Black it's not going to move as much the downside to that is obviously having to be careful where I place it as it's not going to move into the or flow into the recesses like it normally would but at the same time that stops it from flowing away from where I want it um, and that way I can almost lock it in place I just have to make sure that I place it rather than blob it and let the running do the work so what I'm trying to do is use the raised edges of the trim as a point that I can pull the wash off of the bristles and get it up against and down in that little recess up against that trim and even in this shadow area you're going to going to get that darker shadow right up against those trims Just turning the model upside down now to help me pull against this rim. Now 
Now because this is reflective light, that will still show a little bit of shadow down in that trim area, unlike on this side. Now what I'm actually doing here is treating this as though I'm painting the trim but sloppily and by that I mean I'm over painting so that it's lining down on either side of it and that gives me a nice edge without coming too far into the details and uh, staining up in them obviously I may need to go back and do this again once I've got the gold on but obviously you can't tell that until we've got that gold on but there we go that just makes all that stand out just a little bit more Right, and there we go. So you can see it's just given a nice little edge just to all of the the edges right up against those trims there, darkened it up slightly. And just pushed these uh, these highlights just up onto the plating of the armour. So, that brings us to the end of this part of uh, the Loken section. Um, next episode, which should be up in a, a day or two, we'll be looking at doing anything that is not um, metal in the sense of not bronze, copper, gold, silver, you know, actually metal. Um, so it will pretty much be the, the blacks on the shoulder pauldrons, um, the straps, um, on here holding his chest piece up the eyes on the knee guard the shoulder pauldron and the front here um, we'll also go in and do the green for the backpack um, at the moment obviously I've not stuck it to anything so I can't do it right now um, it's late and that will be the end of this part but we'll get that done at the start of the next video along with the rest so that we make that about an hour as well I'm trying to keep these videos and painting sessions to about an hour each so you can see obviously they are live painted and uh, voiceovered as I'm doing them um, but I'm trying to keep them about an hour each to finish an entire section so obviously we've got all this section done in this hour or so so next time I'm hoping to get all the reds, browns, blacks and the other colours done in the next hour or so um, along with the pauldron, uh, the backpack. Then we'll move on to the cape, and then we can come in and do all the uh, the golds and the metals. So that's it for this time, guys. I do hope you're enjoying these videos, and uh, obviously thank you ever so much for your support um, with Patreon. Obviously, like I say, I'm saving up for some better equipment and uh, you know ways to record and all that all that stuff so uh, until next time take it easy keep painting those minis
Okay, so now that we've got the uh, the front area done, just going to do the uh, the backpack on here. Obviously, using the same method, so we're going to get that green mixed up first. Oh, that darker green. Like I said, this is going to be base. Although actually, no, we started with the ink by darkness base, didn't we? So, get this ink by darkness on first. reference images that I've got were pretty much green down this center part and then everything else is sort of bronze coppery type look and so that is what we'll aim for with this so what I'm going to do obviously we've got these edges here it's important that we don't forget these these bits are going to be for the most part in shadow so they're going to be not too much off from the uh, the shadow areas uh, you know down here and that and then we've got all of this top area now I'm going to leave the holes um, in here black but I will drop some null oil in there just to make sure that they are black in there obviously you're going to have bits where the spray paint or the uh, the brush over that I did with the Abaddon black may not have got into them so dropping some null oil in there will darken them up to match Obviously I've got this blue tacked um, in position just so I can work out where the highlights, low lights and shadows and all that is going to be in relation to the rest of the model. Um, the only downside is obviously the tack to get enough on there to hold it in position means that I'm a little bit limited on what I can paint obviously there's certain areas the tack is covering so I'm not able to paint that um, so when it comes to doing those areas obviously I'll either remove it or if we can get the cape done first and get it all fitted then uh, I'll go ahead and paint it once it's attached Obviously the downside to that is that it will limit me on what areas I can then access. But it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Right, so now working with this slightly lighter green. Obviously all over the top, and just let that dry for a second. We'll get this all over the top there. And uh, also down the back, that's a little bit bright there. may need to darken that up slightly the back here can be in this I 
there's obviously the further down it goes the darker it's going to get um, up here it's going to get brighter and because the light source is coming from this direction we're going to get a good band of light up on the top here so obviously we want to make sure that we get that and then each of these sort of these holes are going to have an highlight on that bottom edge of them as they catch and reflect the light so it's important that we uh, get that looking right and just darken that up slightly for uh, these bottom ones we do want them green as they are exposed but we don't want them as bright as this whole top area about what I'm looking for down here and just around there so now what we can do is mix some of that green in to brighten it up slightly and then what we're going to do is focus this ever so slightly on the bottom of these as the top portion will be in shadow from the previous layer do is work in side motions working my way up to this lighter area and we can now glaze this in multiple uh, layers and build it up to that green up the top Again, use it kind of as an edge highlight for down here. And then build it up towards the top. Right, so it seems it's gone a little bit cooler today. Let's take a little bit for that paint to dry. Plus, obviously, we're working in a smaller area. Obviously, as I was doing the bottom here, working my way up, the bottom was drying. Whereas now, obviously, we're doing the bottom here, but it's such a small gap that the top isn't drying enough by the time we get back round to it right so this I'd say is probably about as dark as this area here and obviously we want to get it more towards this <coughs> and so once that's dried up there we can start mixing in 
our greens here. seems about right for for that so what I'm gonna do is use this to edge highlight as we did before and then like I said as at the top there that edge highlight is going to disappear as it blends in with the rest of this but we can edge highlight all of these areas just to make them stand out a little bit So, again I'm going to work this along the top here. Rinse the brush and then Feather anything out. There we go. Now we can mix in some of this over here a little bit of this white and then what we're going to do is just edge highlight around the bottom of these I find the easiest way to do this is as though you're trying to paint inside the hole but you keep hitting the edge and don't go all the way down otherwise you will end up painting inside the hole but I find that this gives the uh, the cleanest edge to circle highlights rather than trying to line the outside of them Right, now, highlight wise, obviously we can put an edge highlight along here, and down here, we put one on the outside edge here, and along here, but what we're going to get is a small highlight really much along there so again thin this down quite a bit I'm going to use the uh, the stippling motion and get that little bit of texture within that highlight there like so and then we can go back in to the slightly darker one rinse our brush and then just stipple this 
with water to blend it right down to this edge. I'm going to mix in a little bit more white and very carefully edge highlight here just a few spots along here and then again we're just going to stipple a small section of highlight right along here there we go now I've got a thing I did that out of camera shot so apologies there guys but hopefully you can see that highlight edge along there 